What's the difference between a person and a table? A table doesn't cry when it breaks a leg. And maybe one or two other things. Hey, 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 what's up my fellow problem solvers? Thanks for joining me today. And in today's video, we're going to explore yet another one of those eight problem solving strategies for the primary mathematician, you. And in this video, we're going to explore the make a table strategy. To implement or to use the make a table strategy, what we do is we take the data or the information that the problem gives us and we organize it into a table, rows and columns. Once we organize the information in that table, it'll allow us to more easily see what the problem is asking us for and solve that problem. Here, let's take a look at an example. All right, let's take a look at this problem. It says that Tom has a pet store called Scales and Tails. He sells lizards and fish. Presently, right now, he has 20 animals for sale. For every lizard he has for sale, he has three fish to sell. How many fish and lizards are in Tom's store? Okay, so the problem tells us that he has 20 animals, and what is the problem asking us to find? Of those 20 animals, how many are fish, and how many are lizards? So we're going to use the make a table strategy to solve this problem. So the first thing we need to do is make a table. The table is simply rows and columns. In this particular table, we're going to need three rows. We're going to need one row to keep track of how many lizards he has. We're going to keep another row to keep track of how many fish he has. And in our third row, we'll keep track of the total pets. It says he has three fish for every lizard. So let's figure this out. If he has one lizard, what does that mean? How many fish? It says for every lizard he has three fish. What would that mean in total pets? Four total pets. So now we're going to continue to fill in our table until we have enough information to solve the problem. So let's go. If he has two lizards, that means he must have six fish. And in that case, two plus six would be eight pets. Okay, eight is not enough. He has 20. So let's go on. Three. If he has three lizards, that means he's going to have nine fish. And that would mean he would have 12 pets for sale. Again, we have not yet solved our problem. So let's continue. With four lizards for sale, he would then have 12 fish for sale, and that would give us a total of 16 pets. Still not enough, so we continue. If he has five lizards, that would mean he would have 15 fish, and that would mean he would also have 20 total animals for sale. Well, it says in our problem that he has 20 animals for sale, so our table is complete. We have enough information to solve the problem. So what is it asking us? It's asking us how many fish and lizards are in Tom's store. So with the table filled, we can now solve our problem. Tom has five lizards and 15 fish for sale. You see the way we organize that data into a table and then use that table to solve the problem. Here, let's take a look at yet another example. Here we go. Let's look at this problem. It says, I want to build a 30 foot fence. The fence is made up of alternating two foot and four foot sections. How many sections of each will I need? And the problem's telling us that I'm in building a fence. I need to build 30 foot of fence. 
The fence is going to be made up of a two foot section, followed by a four foot section, followed by a two foot section, followed by a four foot section. And it's gonna repeat this pattern until I have all 30 feet. So let's solve this problem using the make a table problem solving strategy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a table. This table has four rows. The first row will keep track of the sections that I'm gonna need. The second row is gonna keep track of how many feet the two foot sections take up. The third row is gonna keep track of how many feet the four foot sections take up. And the fourth row is gonna keep track of the total length of my fence. And this fourth row is very important because when the total length is 30, I know I'm done. All right, so if I use one of each section, that means my two foot sections are gonna take up a total of two feet. And my four foot sections will take up a total of four feet. That's one of each. My fence at this point will be six feet long. Now if I use another section of each, two sections, my two foot sections will take up four feet. My four foot sections will take up eight feet. And at that point, the total length of the fence will be 12 feet. If I use three sections of each, my two foot sections will take up six feet. My four foot sections will take up 12 feet, and that would be a total length of 18 feet. If I use four sections, my two foot sections will take up eight feet. My four foot sections will take up 16 feet, and that would be a total of 24 feet of fence. If I use five sections, my two foot sections will take up 10 feet. My four foot sections will take up 20 feet. And that will be a total of 30 feet altogether. Now 30 feet is exactly what I'm looking for because I'm building a 30 foot fence. So I have now solved my problem. To make a 30 foot fence, I will need five sections of each. Five two foot sections and five four foot sections. So once again, you saw how we organize the data in the form of a table, and then we use that table to solve the problem. So here, let me give you an example and see if you can use the make a table strategy to solve a problem on your own. So here's a problem for you to try on your own. It says, Pat is decorating her house for Halloween. For every witch decoration she has, she also has two pumpkin and four skeleton decorations. If Pat has 28 decorations altogether, how many pumpkin decorations does she have? So to get you started on this problem, I went and built the table for you. In this table, we have four rows. It's going to keep track of the number of witch decorations, the number of pumpkin decorations, and the number of skeleton decorations, as well as the total decorations. We're gonna use this table to solve the problem. So hit pause, do your best to solve the problem when you think you got it. Hit play, I'll be here and we'll see how you did. Okay, welcome back my friends. Let's see how you did. So the first thing we need to note is that she has a total of 28 decorations. So when we have a total of 28, we know that we have enough information in our table to solve the problem. But of course, the first thing we need to do is fill in the table. So it says for every one decoration that's a witch, she has two that are pumpkins and four that are skeletons. 
So with one witch decoration, that means she has two pumpkin decorations and four skeleton decorations. And in total, that makes seven decorations altogether. Now, if she had two witch decorations, that would mean she would have four pumpkin decorations and eight skeleton decorations. And now she would have a total of 14 decorations altogether. Still not enough. We keep going. If she has three witch decorations, that means she would have six pumpkin decorations and 12 skeleton decorations. And now she would have a total of 21 decorations. Let's keep on going. With four witch decorations, that means she would have eight pumpkin decorations and 16 skeletons. And now she has a total of 28 decorations altogether. Well, the problem is saying 28. We got 28 in our table, so we have enough information to solve the problem. They want to know how many pumpkin decorations does she have. Well, with four witch decorations, she, she has a total of 28 decorations. And of those 28 decorations, eight of them are pumpkin. So the solution to our problem is Pat has eight pumpkin decorations. So how'd you do? Did the table help you solve a problem? I'm sure it did. Well, once again, guys, thanks for stopping by. As always, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.